Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we've found it. The coldest Percy panel in the entire series. What's up guys, Alpon here, and here we are to do a breakdown and review of chapter 126 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, which is known as Prayer. And, uh, you know, you know how bad it is when I lock it and actually say it properly. Yo. Yo. After, admittedly, I'm, 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 I don't want to call it a downgrade for the last chapter. The thing is, though, the thing is, though, these are two entirely different scales. They are opposite sides of the spectrum. Last chapter was all about the spectacle, the raw power, the insanity of the two warriors on display. This chapter is just dominance. It is dominance in its purest form. And since it's so pure, I don't want to waste any more time. Editing me, I summon thee to this plane of reality. Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? There's a punch here. Fun fact. I have it on me, and I keep it on me at all times. Another fun fact. See this fellow right here? You see this fellow right here? With a big old grin and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different copies of himself. Ten toes down, ten Percy's down. I'm not saying that he may be the second strongest knight now, but I'm also not saying that he is. Okay, obviously we got a lot to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into the chapter itself. So we open up, and we do get to see that, oh my boy, my son, Nakaba, Nakaba, I swear, he's getting... Maybe I'm just reading into it too much. Maybe, and who knows? A lot of people, especially people who like know I talk about Four Nights, but don't actually watch the reviews, except for like little bits. They're like, dude, why do you, why do you just want Nazians to go? I don't want Nazians to go, but I swear the man's getting end flags like every other chapter. And I could have sworn, especially in that moment where one of them literally had their blade drawn and was like, like they were really about to shatter him. I thought, bro, was done. I thought, admittedly, I thought we were getting a completely different chapter than the one we got. And honestly, Nakaba's ability to shatter my ankles is greatly appreciated. I don't want them anyway. They're they're fragile to begin with. However, we do get to see my boy Nasians. He does come out and he gets absolute consult. And I is it still spoil? It's still spoiled. I need Core Three to come out of Bleach. I need Core Three to come out. Because there's such a specific... I'm literally waiting for Core 3 to come out. So I can do the discussion without feeling like I'm spoiling people. There's a very particular ability in a very popular series that a lot of people know about. And honestly, this petrification ability, this ability to turn people into stone, I want Arthur's abilities to function just like that other ability from the very popular series because this would be such a crazy ability to have. But of course, it is magic nonetheless. And we see Gawain is like... Sorry, Nasians. no matter how many times Pencil may say, we are going to get rid of you just now, and boom, absolute cancel. And of course, Nasians. this is interesting. I'm pretty sure it was established that King's petrification left Bon conscious. Like, he was still a lot, or at least his soul was. Notably, that was a weird scenario. They were in the capital of the dead versus the real world, and obviously the capital of the dead versus the mortal realm versus the demon realm. Who knows? Properties may operate differently, and they're obviously two different types of magics. But notably, while Bond maintained consciousness, notably, Nasian seems to be locked in time. Like, nothing has, no time has passed for him. He's been petrified. Meaning this is actually a way to have pseudo-immortality? interesting obviously i don't think it'll matter unless chaos ends up working like that other ability from that very popular series if it does could get a crazy time skip but if it doesn't then this will never appear again nakaba is a big proponent of giving one-off characters human characters especially ironically enough like demon clan abilities aren't really that crazy i know this is weird to say but like in comparison to what humans spawn in with, heck, even the most basic ones like Thunderbolt and I think Tempest or Tornado, no, Tornado is the Grace, so I believe it's Tempest, Hauser's Magic. That's some pretty good stuff. Not to talk about the complex ones like Ardbeg that reverse people's ages, not to talk of things like Petrification, what? There was one of them who could like multiply, someone could multiply the amount of magic that 
basic abilities used, I believe that was Arden, the archer. Like, humans just have weirdly cracked abilities. So it's unfortunate that <laughs> petrification got wasted on, admittedly, I don't want to call them a random, but like, I don't even know the person's name. Like, I just completely forget, but this is a really good ability that, unfortunately, I highly doubt we're going to see again unless this cast of knights is allowed to live. So far, we've kind of been the only knights that have been directly allowed to live by Nakaba and by proxy the knights are Helgard, because he was too powerful for them at the time, and or Lancelot or Tristan at the time just felt like letting them go. Ironside, because he was too powerful at the time and Lance wasn't going to reveal himself. And that's about it. I think... Every other... Oh, and Jericho. Jericho's made it in and out, because once again, she's just a simply more important character. And Mortlock. Mortlock has shown up and left before. So we have four knights that have shown up... <sighs> How ironic. We have four knights. But we have four knights that have shown up on screen, had fights. Well, admittedly, this is Mortlock's first battle. But he's shown up on screen, had fights, and vanished. I think maybe these knights will get the same courtesy because they're still alive. Lancelot hasn't, sh sh bang. And of course, that comes to the, and here's the thing, right? There's really no reason to leave the knights except for maybe Nanashi alive. Being real with you. Because the door to Camelot's right there. Like, like they don't even need the knights anymore. Before, I would have made an argument that, you know, Lance erasing Fittich or Lance doing anything to any of the knights or Tristan doing anything to any of the knights or Gawain doing anything to any of the knights getting rid of them wasn't a smart choice because remember the whole reason they were on this journey was to find a chaos knight so they could get to Camelot using their door even though that seems to be something that literally can't happen due to the fail safe that Arthur put in there but now that they have a direct door to Camelot the knights are nothing but a liability heck say they turn around and go in the knights break out of the bonds that they're going to be revealed to have in this chapter and just stroll right on through then they're going to get ganked again. Except instead of getting ganked by, what, six people, they're going to get ganked by six people plus all of Camelot plus likely a full-powered Chaos Arthur. There's all, <laughs> I'm just saying there's a lot of danger on the horizon. So ultimately, it's dark, it's sad, it's unfortunate, but I do think the wisest move is to get them up out of here. And I know <laughs> I couldn't do it. Like, I, I literally couldn't, but... I think in this scenario, they got to do it. However, sorry, I've been talking so much. We see that Nasians, now he's locked back in. It's like, <gasps> okay, I'm about to slaughter them all. But unfortunately, or fortunately, it's just going, chilling. And he naturally asks, um, not that I'm not thankful, but what's going on? And we see Gawain, after Nasian question, says, wasn't I fighting those Chaos Knights with everyone just now? And Gawain simply explains, oh, well, it looks like you were petrified. Oh, I see. <gasps> Wait, Donnie was turned to stone as well. I need to detoxify him. That was very interesting. It was a point I was wondering about back when the petrification first went down. And immediately, this does get immediately debunked by Gawain. But it's interesting that Nazians implies that maybe he could heal petrification if it was just basic poison or like paralysis or something like that. Because notably, he specifically says Donnie was turned to stone as well. I need to detoxify him, which implies that Nasians has a way to de-stone people. I get Nasians, especially out of all of our cast so far, next to Percy, and obviously, I'd say even more than Tristan up to this point. And Nasians has definitely been our. Oh, you have a very specific illness that is. <laughs> I've been watching way too many Fire Emblem Fates videos, specifically Ramsey's Fire Emblem Fates video, and <laughs> the illness specific to that region. You've caught this completely random thing that I should have absolutely no preparedness for? Well, guess what? I have something here just for it, or I can just negate it through my ability. Nazians has kind of been that character, so I'm interested to see how he would deal with stonification. Like, notably, he specifically says turn to stone here. He doesn't say, Donnie was paralyzed too. No, specifically turn to stone. So Nazians seems to have something, or believes that he has something in his kit that could allow for returning from stone, which will be useful if Gawain is ever unavailable or if the specific method that Gawain mentions that Nasians can't do anything about is different and it's actually a poison-based method. And we see that Gawain says, look closer. He's frozen down to his clothes, just like you were. It's magic, no poison, so you can't cure it. And she says something interesting. Conte de la... Now, I have no idea what these words mean. So, and I have no idea what... I'm not sure if it's Latin or nothing. So I'm going to try and say it, and I'm only going to try and say it because it has an interesting thing in there. 
If I say it wrong, feel free to correct me. If I summon something I finally need to use all these four, I have a Keyblade, I'm ready to fight Ansem if he spawns behind me after I say this. So, I'm pretty sure I messed up that last word entirely. This is the incantation for Absolute Cancel. I don't think we've ever heard it before. It's such a weird thing, but I don't think, have we heard it before? Typically, Merlin doesn't even use an incantation. She just says Absolute Cancel. So maybe it's a similar thing to Jujutsu Kaisen, where, like, the higher level mage you are, the less words you need to use to activate your spells. Maybe Merlin just whispered it quietly to herself every single time off panel. But this is the first time we've actually heard the absolute cancel incantation. And it's relatively short. It's a relatively short incantation. So that's very, very powerful. For an ability that can kind of just turn off all magic, for only having a four-line chant, not even really four-line, it's four words, not four lines, that's really, really good. Maybe that's just a testament to how good Gawain is as a mage, or maybe it is just a really simple incantation. And the thing I want to mention is Sodior Belialui. I will say, I'm saying what I think it is. It sounds like there's the word soldier, and it sounds like there's Belialuin, Merlin's home, the capital of wizard country. Or not capital of wizard country. Essentially, I think they were kind of, before Leonis was established and all the other kingdoms, I think they were kind of like the center place of humans. So it's interesting that that name, even if someone, maybe I'm just reading way too deep into it. Welcome to that guy with the pencil. It's what I do. But maybe I'm reading way too deep into it, but it seems like Beliadwin is mentioned. But maybe that's just me itching and scratching for any more context of that place, because I still don't understand why Merlin has a separate name for that. That weird symbol that appeared once in the Grey Road fight and never appeared again, no idea why she has that name. So any hint of Belialuin, I'm always itching and scratching and feeding for it. But with that being the case, we see that she does use Absolute Cancel and the Donners is freed instantaneously. He's like, what? Where's the rapier girl who attacked me? I need to throw her away. And we see that Gawain is like, well... I activated my magic too soon. I've been kind of stuck in bonds for an entire week and I'm not making any money off of them. So they ain't the good bonds. Ombi. And she just clocks out. And we see that, of course, they're naturally concerned for her because, yeah, she's one of their fighting assets. And obviously, we know now they are 100% viewing her as a friend. So them being naturally worried for her is nice. It's cute. And we see that Gawain is like, I'm in love with you real quick. I'm good. I'm vibing. I'll be fine. Just take care of mommy, I sold. And that insufferable mob head. Do it for me. Healing magic. Oh, it isn't my strong point. Interesting. Have we ever seen Merlin use healing magic? I don't think we have. It's always been Elizabeth. I don't think we've ever acted. Like, we saw Mayel use healing magic. Luna shall use healing magic. I don't think we ever saw a Tommy on. Sorry, I'll do it. But I think we've seen all of them use healing magic, but we've never actually seen Merlin. She's built, pulled off a bunch of spells of various levels and various varieties. Elemental, non-elemental, absolute cancel, teleportation, space manipulation, like what, attack placing. We've seen her use all types of spells. But I don't think Merlin's ever used healing spells. And it's interesting that Gawain, obviously the Merlin surrogate for this series, also is not a healer. Though admittedly, she says healing magic isn't my strong point, not that she can't use it. Like... Writing with my left hand isn't my strong point, but I can still kind of do it. So maybe that's the kind of scenario. Maybe she just doesn't know any healing magic. Once again, healing in particular seems almost entirely exclusive to the goddess clan or anyone who has a direct relation to him. I think the only like verbatim healers we've seen in the entire series are the goddess clan. In your Elizabeths, your Myels, your Ludashells, your Tristans. And or, I guess Tristan technically counts as one who's closely related to it, the Druids. Hendrickson is someone we've seen heal before, and he's very specifically a Druid, which has direct ties to the Goddess Clan. It's interesting that that subsect of abilities is only locked off to them, and by proxy, they also have a really good regeneration factor. Like, maybe that's because of the healing magic, but it seems to be an automatic thing. So the Goddess Clan, don't get me wrong, I still think the Demon Clan clears them in a head-to-head, -head, everyone at their full power fight, but... They kind of, like, low-key, it's kind of how 
Fun fact, if you haven't seen it, there's a video I made talking about the Demon Clan versus the Goddess Clan and which one I would rather be on average based on the average of both of their summations. And while I did come to the conclusion that the Demon Clan is stronger, faster, likely more diverse in terms of their abilities, since goddess, goddesses don't usually have unique abilities, I'd still rather be a goddess. The healing plus the Nyan immortality plus the flight, well, the inherent flight, though admittedly that comes with consistent wings, and... The healing factor, all that is way, way more solid than the Demon Clan, who is the second shortest lived race, even less than fairies. And also, while they have unique magics, they're very specifically combat oriented. They don't really have many support abilities, like, ever. Like, I think the only demon that has, like, a support ability, kind of, is, like, Gother and Malascula. Critical Over doesn't do anything support wise, Full Size doesn't do anything support wise. I mean, Zeldris' magic can... But even then, that's not even Zeldris' magic. Omnis Nebula doesn't do anything support-wise. In fact, it's anti-support. It harms your allies if it's used properly and they aren't strong enough to tank it. What am I thinking? Combo Star? No. I guess Mon Speed's Trick Star can be counted as support-wise, legally speaking, because, you know, he can swap people with it, which is useful. I'll, I'll give that a support magic alongside, like, the Gothers and Molascula's Underworld Gate. But, like, I'm trying to think... I mean, Grey Road's ability is technically support to, like, giving birth, but th there's so many weird things about that. And it's interesting that Gawain is the one that kind of got me thinking about that. But with that being the case, we see that Nasians runs over and goes to take care of Isolde, who is still reeling <laughs> from the attack she got earlier. And we see Nasians whip out a gauze. Once again, the fact that this man just has so much on him. I get he's covered in, like, those vials. That's what excuses it. But, bro, just has an answer for everything. And we see that he explains... <clears throat> This should stop the bleeding and pain shortly. It's a balm made from fairy shepherd's pure purse I'm sorry, this is such weird. Like, <laughs> it is so weird. Let me see. It's a balm made from fairy shepherd's fairy, not fairy, fairy shepherd's purse buds, giant leech bile, and lesser dragon scales. Where did you get half of this? Did Hendrickson just have that lying around? Did you have it like, Ordo, what kind of freaky stuff were you into? The fairy stuff, I can understand. He literally lived in a gorge with fairies. Giant leech bile? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> you ordered that on, what would be the 7 Deadly Sin slash Four Nights version of Amazon? Fairies? On? I have no idea, but like, where'd you get that from? And we see that he does actually use it to heal both of them. And while Isol thanks of the ungrateful, <laughs> insufferable mob head over here, it's like, giant leech, what? And to be fair, even if I was being healed by Nasians, if you told me, like, it's kind of like, I like to eat pretty much anything, literally anything. I can, you put it in front of me, just don't tell me what it is, because then my brain will form preconceived notions. I've eaten a bunch of strange things, some of which I'm not going to say, because I'm not sure, I don't know, you don't really like some of the things I've eaten, but I've eaten all kinds of different things, and usually, I don't care, because I have a cast iron stomach for the most part, and I'm, when I'm hungry, I'm hungry, but I, th I still think it's a similar scenario, I've been told when I'm about to eat something unorthodox, and it makes it harder for me to eat, versus if you just laid it in front of me and said, eat, like, then I'll just do it, so, Nazians, I appreciate the info, dog, but, uh, <laughs> You could have left out the leech bile part. The lesser dragon skills is kind of cool, though. If I was being healed by dragon skills, that'd be kind of neat. But the bile? You had to tell me about the bile? Like, isn't that acid? I, I forget what bile is. 100%. And the Google is nowhere near me, so I'm not about to Google it. But we see that <laughs> Nazian's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, I'm Empathy. I'm Death Boy. That's why it's going to hurt Pencil so much when I finally go. If I ever do go, maybe Pencil's just speaking things into existence. And hopefully I'm wrong. But let's see. We see Tristan says, Oh, I appreciate that so much. I've completely tapped out my magic force as well. So, I mean, that's interesting. Did he really? Like, I don't know. I guess technically he's never had, like, a longer war of attrition. But, like, in the Leonis arc, he had, like, four separate fights. And today, he only... I mean, to be fair, the Testament piece was strong. Don't get me wrong. But, like, he hopped out the Albion. Went into hybrid mode once. Went into goddess eyes once. And spawned four wings. I don't know how Rose burnt out. Like, remember, in the Leonis arc, he went goddess. I flicked out of goddess. Went goddess again. Went into demon mark. Went left demon... Well, no. He was beaten out of demon mark. 
So I guess maybe maybe it is about similar in terms of Tristan's stamina. But that's interesting. You would think you have a lot more magic force. or Because magic force essentially here is how much magic stamina they have. The magic meter, essentially. He already burnt his out, so that's very interesting. I wonder how fast it takes him to regenerate. We'll probably find that out eventually. But we see that Nazian's like, oh, well, that's no problem, but I see we're all here. How did the battle go? And uh, <laughs> this is the, the gaggle, the gaggle of individuals. We have one, two, three, four, five, six... Nanashi, abs out. Rosebank. I'm still, I don't know. Maybe I'm too focused on the trees and stuff. But like, especially since Arthur's watching the fight, I guess, once again, he probably only saw a post-chaos stab. But like, Rosebank, you little kids on Ah, like, think about it. Especially based on what happens later in this chapter, if Percy didn't have the personal sword, well, maybe he actually still did have Zelda's sword on him because he didn't have the personal sword to begin with. So he probably still would have won against <laughs> his uncle. But with that being the case, I don't know. Roseman, you you, uh, you a mega trader, dog. But these are some interesting designs. Once again, I highly doubt we're going to see the only two, the only two I could see surviving and us seeing them again are Nanashi because Nanashi is relatively important. It's weird to say he's relatively important, but he is essentially Arthur's only remaining except for Orlandi, of course he's arthur's only remaining combat ready right hand from the previous series ironside pelgard mortlock as much as we love them they're all four knights original characters they don't predate the sequel series at all meanwhile nanashi is the only seemingly enough the only holdover of the old Arthur crew from the previous series. So I think he's a little bit too important to get rid of right now. And considering Arthur hasn't smited him for getting rid of Grey Deer to Lancelot, it seems like he's going to be good for a while. And Rosebank. Unfortunately, this guy, as nice as his beard is, this girl, as nice as her hair is, this girl, she looks familiar. I've seen that. But then again, Nakaba is a lot, kind of has a decent amount of same face syndrome. But like this whole design looks very, very similar. And. This guy, he looks so scared. I'm assuming, if I had to take a guess, this is the archer dude. This is the lady with the rapier. This is obviously the Tarmiel knockoff with the three heads. This guy, I honestly don't know. Who else was there? The little guy. <laughs> we'll go with that. Interesting to see these demons, too. Unfortunately, they still don't get any lines. These are essentially our six knights of black, but like... Hard canon? But then again, the Six Knights of Black are canon. It's weird. We never actually, the only time we see any of the Six Knights of Black in the manga are Brain, do the brain thing, Bellion and Pump. We see Bellion and Pump in that extra chapter that is canon to the main series, and the Six Knights of Black are actually canon because they're actively mentioned within the main manga. I know some people heavily debate the canonicity of that extra chapter that was released alongside the movie, but that chapter is canon. It's the battle where the Archangels develop their fear of Meliodas because he fought by El. That, that, despite us not seeing much of that battle, that aspect of the chapter is canon, and Bellion and the Six Knights of Black are canon. But it appears like Nakaba does not want to directly dibble and dabble his toes in there, and I know the canonicity argument on, what is it? It's been so long since I've watched that movie. No, that movie has the best animation of all the movies. What is it? What is it called? Prisoners of the Sky. Prisoners of the Sky. That movie has debatable canonicity, mainly because it cannot fit anywhere in the timeline, like, at all. I may do a video one day breaking down how... Why Curse by Light literally can't be canon. Either someone's dead, King's Wings aren't there, or something. There's, everything's wrong with that movie <laughs> in terms of canonicity in the timeline. So maybe the events of that movie aren't canon, but the prequel is, and the Six Nights of Black are. But once again, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. This six demons, one of them that happens to share a heavy resemblance to Bellion, another one who shares a heavy resemblance to Pump. But... And look, this guy, he was a lion in the movie, tiger here. This one had their hair up in the movie, but it's down here. This girl, I think, literally looks the exact same. I don't remember this guy, though. So he's, I think he's, like, the only unique addition. But, yeah, the Six Nights of Black are, in fact, canon. But this group, despite being a seemingly another variation of the Six Nights of Black, we have no context with the rest of them, and I highly doubt we'll get any more. But this is a nice little image. I do like how much Nakaba fit onto this one page. And... Donnie. Donners. 
Donnie G, my boy. I, I try to defend you, bro. I try to defend you. I try to fight for your life, Donnie boy. I try to fight for your life, Donnie boy. But I can't let this slide, dog. He says, <laughs> yep. Well, it sure looks like we kick their butts for good, huh, fellas? Goofy, if you don't shut your goofy behind up, you want to talk about kicking butts? You are butt. You did nothing. <laughs> did he act? I need to reread. Did he actually do? I think he literally accomplished nothing. I think he may have thrown one person and immediately got stoned. And not in that way. Literally petrified. Like, dog. Donnie, out of all the people here who has a right to brag, you are probably on the bottom. In my live reaction, which you can check out on the Patreon for as little as $1 a month or become a member for as low as $3 a month, I go through at a quicker pace so I can get a full comprehension of the chapter. Dog, tell me why I didn't notice this. Wayne, stop. 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 Jail. Jail. Sweet mother of my, I, okay, okay, let me say this, let me say this, I'll be, I'll be completely real and honest with y'all, I've known Gawain's, I've known people who are so down bad, down atrocious, down diabolical, that they would do something like this, but please, from the bottom of my heart, don't be one of them, no, what, what Gawain, Gawain, why? What? And Lysol, why are you letting it slide? Like, I get Isold isn't the sharpest spoon in the kitchen shed. Trust me, it takes one to know one, and I am not smart. Nor, but like, dog. I'm trying to think, would I even, like, for my people, would you want that? Would you be into that? Like, I've had significant others in the past. Some of whom may or may not have wanted to be in my skin. But like, dog. This is not a significant other scenario. Gawain, you are. You're a demon. In the demon realm. Surrounded by lesser demons. Because they aren't as down atrocious as you. Stop it. Stop it. Like, gee, I didn't even notice it. That's so weird. I don't know. Once again, I love Nakaba. Nakaba is some of my favorite character writing. Some of my favorite art. Some of my favorite characters in manga. I love Mael. No matter how much I clown on him. Trust me, I love Mael. I love Meliodas. I love Escanor. But, like, dog, these questionable things... Gawain, stop it. It's the same thing for, it's like, it's Nakaba on a general scale. Like, dude, you just don't have to include, like, why? I get it's part of her character, but jeez. I hate being associated with this man. Me, see, like, I kind of hate being associated with both of these two. Gosh darn it. But I like Donnie. Donnie has never done any, he's been down atrocious before, but Donnie's never been this down atrocious. Gawain, Why? But we see that even Anne is like, dude, you are such an embarrassment. And like, as a guy who will like flip between roles, I think everyone has their like multiple friend groups or like the variations within their main friend group where like if X person is here, they're the mom or dad friend. And then you sub them out and then they're, then you get to like shift up or you have to shift up. Like I'm typically the secondary mom or dad friend. If the main mom or dad friend cannot show up, I'm the one who's there like, hey, don't do that. Hey, stop that. You're going to get hurt. Blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I have a mom or dad friend that I hang out with. And whenever they're there, I let them do all that stuff. I just have me in good old time. But, like, I never, I've never been this bad, bro. Come on now. What? But we see that Wayne goes on to say, a pity we all had to go through the ringer for this task. I didn't even notice she was hanging on ISO children. Nakaba with the background details. Gosh darn it, man. Maybe. Except for him, I suppose. And I love how he's just, he's just so enamored by it. He's like, I have a sacred. The treasure. I have one. It's mine. It can live shining. I can use my magic. I'm broken. And here's the thing, right? Especially after this chapter, Nagala is setting up for one of the most devastating flips in the entire series. In the entire duology. I can feel it in my bones. I could, Maybe if the results of this chapter didn't transpire as they did, then maybe I could see otherwise. But it all seems too good. Everything's stacking on top of each other just to 
bit too nice. Oh, guess what? We managed to find a mystical magical door to Camelot right as we entered the Demon Lord arc. Oh, guess what? Percy. Well, I'll get to Percy in a second. Guess what? Tristan has gone under a pseudo journey of self acceptance through the help of Gawain and is able to use both his demon and goddess science more willingly. Gawain hasn't really changed much, but she's becoming more accepting of her friends and bonding. Lancelotto. Oh, he was already super duper powerful before, but now we're going to give him a sacred treasure tier weapon. All of this seems so great, and we're going to head straight into Camelot and whoop Arthur's behind. All of this sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Just amazing. Doesn't it sound like it's going too good? Like, <laughs> once again, I'm holding off on Percy. I'm definitively holding off on Percy, who just makes this scenario look even more too good to be true. Like, everything seems to be going too well. That I feel I feel like maybe, maybe not in 10 chapters, maybe not in 20 chapters, maybe not even in 30 chapters. Okay, that may be dragging it. I, that, may, that may be dragging Maybe it will just be in 10 chapters, depending on how long the Mortlock-Percy scenario goes on. But, uh... I, can, I smell a humbling coming. I, I really feel it. Because, once again... I highly doubt Nakaba's making four nights half the length of the original series. At the bare minimum, and I mean bare minimum, I expect it to be the same length. And if that's the case, we're barely a third of the way through the manga. Actually, I think we're actually exactly at a third, because we're on chapter 126. It's like... Ooh, I, I think I can, I can smell it coming. I can smell it. I can smell the humbling coming. And we see... That one of the other chaos knights is like, hmm, I think a warrior of your caliber could be defeated. And that's interesting. So they do know that Nanashi is like that, like that. <laughs> they do know, they do know. And to be fair, it makes sense. He sold the demon clan, or the six knights of black, or the black knights of six, on his own. So I, I guess they do, they would know. And we see that Nanashi, he's real about it. He's like, hey, I ain't gonna lie to you, dog. He just fought at a higher level. That's about it. He just liked that for real, for real. Once again, I love Lance. And I love the Lance Glaze. Trust me. But once again, I feel like if if the whole crew is getting humbled, I think the whole crew is going to get humbled. If anything, I could see that being when Nasian gets. I, I could see that happening when the great humbling occurs. But once again... If anyone's going to get humbled the most, it's going to be Percy, obviously, because Percy's the main character and he has a lot of friends here. But I think it's going to be Lance. Once again, Nanashi coming out with the straight glaze. He just fought at a higher level. That's it. Like, dog. I, can, I, can, I, can, I don't know. Maybe once again, maybe I'm wrong. Man, I'm, but am I really hoping I'm wrong? Unlike the, unlike the Nasians thing, where I do want Nasi. I want to how long would it take? Probably like five years from now. How many more chapters would that be? They'd probably be in like the mid-300s, assuming the series is about the same length. Five years from now, I want that juicy 16-year time skip, and we have Uncle Nasians taking care of Percy and Anne's kids, and they're dabbing each other up, and Arthur's been taken care of, and all that good stuff. I really want to read that chapter and make that review. I don't know, though. I don't feel like it's going to happen. I want to be wrong about that. But this one, I do kind of think, I think the crew needs a humbling. I think everything's going just a bit too well for them. Whether that humbling come from Arthur or some of Arthur's more powerful subordinates, once again, highlighting how powerful Arthur actually is, I don't know. But once again, Ninashi just got taken care of by Lance. So I don't think any of Arthur's lackeys are going to be enough to deal with him. Unless Arthur has beyond Archangel tier lackeys just chilling around. I know some people are speculating like Ironside, Pelgard, and Jericho are all now beyond Archangel level because they should scale above these lesser squads. But like, unless that's true, unless that's the case, I don't know how this is going to go down. It's, it seems it seems too red flag like. It seems it seems like Nagaba is poking at me too much. Like he knows. He knows what he's cooking. He knows what he's cooking. And we see that, <laughs> speaking of people being down atrocious, the big one, because I don't know her name, she says, ooh, look at what you are hiding all along. And hey, Nanashi, he's kind of fun, I ain't gonna lie. But with that being the case, we see that Donnie asks, 
Hey there, big hero. They're gonna call you Lancelot the Mighty real soon, huh? I'm pretty sure they already do. <laughs> At least I know the Lance fans do. I think even Lance haters are like... I think the main reason Lance gets any hate is because he's too powerful. <laughs> I don't see people like... At least so far, maybe I need to look deeper into the fandom. I've never seen anyone actually get mad at Lance for his character, or like any character writing. I haven't even seen him be called Bland, because it's hard to do that. If you read the series, you can tell Lance is a multi-layered character. They just don't like how strong he is. And like, as a Lance fan, I think it's a little bit of a problem. But I think it's a problem that's going to be rectified soon enough. Hopefully, I'm part of me is like confused on how I want it, though. Do I want Lance to lose a massive chunk of his power so he can be around the level of the rest of the knights? Not really. I do kind of want this power and its origins explored, and I want him to have those powers and origins explored. Oh, he's going to go back and get it again. He would need to keep the power. At the same time, do I really like the scaler in me is obviously happy and itching for everyone to become beyond Archangel Tear. Everyone be above Tarmel. Everyone be above Large Planetary. Yeah, let's just start. Let's just start pushing that narrative. But the power creep that you would have to justify for. Arthur to have numerous subordinates that are beyond the Nashi tier that can actually push sacred treasure to your lands. Like, it's just gotta be crazy. I'm so, once again, in a similar vein to how I was interested to see how Nakaba is going to handle Escanor in the long run, I'm very interested to see how Nakaba is going to handle lands. The further and further the story goes on. Because I thought he was going to handle it by splitting them up. I thought Lance was going to go off on his own, and that's how we were going to add tension back to the plot. But no, Lance is still here. It doesn't seem like Lance is going anywhere anytime soon. I don't know. Nakaba, he's going he's gonna to be walking on thin ice. And we see that Lance, despite, you know, being enamored with his blade, he's like, hey, save the party for after Percy comes back. And that's good. That's good. Even though Lance is wrapped up in the fact that he has a nice new weapon that can actually handle his abilities, he still is worried about his baby brother, Percy. And I love that. And we see that Donnie goes, oh... Yeah, that's right. And Anne asks, oh, that boy, he will make it back safely, won't he? And Donnie begins to sweat as he goes, uh, I ain't too sure about all that. But then he locks in and is like, no, he's going to be fine. Right? Right, Nasians? And Nasians, once again, he's a little bit unsure. He's like, yes, maybe, mostly, I hope so. <laughs> like, And once again, I can't necessarily blame them because there's so many unknowns in that scenario. Especially considering the assumption they're under. And we see what I assume is the petrifying lady say, I'll be frank with you. That is not going to happen. It won't? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I don't know why. I give Donnie my Yamcha voice. Is that appropriate? I feel like Donnie's more useful than Yamcha. I'm talking about Z. I know Yamcha's relatively useful. Was he relatively useful in the original Dragon Ball? What fights did Yamcha win in original Dragon Ball? I haven't read original Dragon Ball or watched original Dragon Ball in so long. How many fights has Yamcha actually won in total? I don't know. I don't think it's that many. So maybe, I assume Donnie is more useful than Yamcha, but they seem like the same kind of like, not necessarily surfer dude. Like, I have a more surfer dude voice. I don't really give that to Yamcha or the Donners. I kind of give more of a dude bro voice. Like, yeah, dude. Let's go, bro, dude. Like, I don't I don't know why. But they always have the same. Maybe it's the long hair. I have no idea. But we see that the older gentleman clarifies she means he'll come back in a coffin. Yes. Mortlock's magic-driven space shuts out all sorcery inside. The only way to escape is if one or the other perishes or is knocked out of battle. So... And the conditions for Mortlock's ability are once again being established, aka this is Nakaba making it seem impossible that Percy could do anything. And of course, everyone realizes, considering how much of a hope merchant Percy is, that wait, he can't use his magic? Without his magic, he could he could actually perish permanently. <laughs> he could actually be in danger. Everyone's worried. However, notably, look at who's worried. Tristan has sweat drops and he's worried. Nasian's jaws dropped and Donnie's clenched his teeth. Isold's worried. Quaid is still hanging off Isold's shoulder. How did I not notice this in the live reaction, dog? What? But Kion is dripping. Even this is, you know, it's crazy when Kion is actually showing concern. That's character development of himself. He's not grinning to himself like, yeah, night's gonna bear. No, he's like, oh. and even Anne is shocked. But there's a certain someone missing. You know who it is. They have a lance. And we see the larger woman. I mean, larger than 
She got games. She says, <laughs> yes, you may have beat us. I'll give you, I'll grant you that. What? You may have beat us. I'll grant you that. But so what? As long as we finish our mission. Our mission is to put Percival of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse six feet under, I mean. I mean, it sounds like a good plan. You had the right method. Maybe even the right motivation. It all sounds good. It sounds great, in fact. It sounds possible. Feasible, even. It really do, don't it? It really, really do. But you almost for forgot who the main character is, broski. As we see that the demons, Schwartz and Dump, I'm not sure what we call this pump clone. I just hear, do any of the other demons actually have names? I don't think Nakab has actually gone out of his way to give them names. But we see... That since Lancelot's gotten his fair amount of glaze, it's time for Percy to get some glaze. As he say, Sir Percival would never lose the likes of you. Yes, he's right. And Rosebank, quietly, you know, the Percy lover, she's like, um, Sir, Sir Mortlock's skill with the blade surpasses even that of Ironside with the four evils. Were they called the four evils before? I still don't remember. I need to double check that. Were they called the four evils? If, I think they must have been, because I know they refer to as the four somethings, but the four evils, I don't remember. I believe it's him, Pelgard, and is Jericho included in that? I don't remember. I don't remember the total of the four evils. Maybe we just haven't met the other two, but the four evils. Presumably, they are the equivalent of the four archangels for Arthur and should be some of his most powerful soldiers, which is why a lot of people are assuming that even the Chaos Commandments fall beneath Pelgard and Ironside, because they're simply lower tier. They're expendable in comparison to them where they essentially have their own free reign except for ironside ironside seems a little under arthur's heel if you know what i mean but pelgard pelgard's vibing would that be the case naturally considering what the most of the crew knows of ironside they're like oh, wait he's even better than ironside hey but Percival fought that simulated ironside as part of lancelot's training right they're huffing straight copium just like me for real for real and Ossian says yes but if he didn't beat that challenge He's in big trouble. And that's true. And especially since presumably he would have, at least from their understanding of it, Percy would have beaten him with magic, which he doesn't have access to right now, even if he won. And they don't know that he won. However, we cut into the battlefield, which we haven't seen for about, like, I think a solid five chapters. And we see Diodra, the stone statue. Am I saying it right? Is it? Tell me if I'm saying that right in the comment section. Am I saying Diodra right? Am I putting too much emphasis? Am I rolling my R's? <laughs> Diodra. Diodra. Yeah, I roll the R's on the Dra. I suppose it's Diodra. Diodra. Not Diodra. I don't know why. I don't know why I even say it like that. There's no accents. There's no N's. There's no nothing on any of the letters. But my brain automatically defaults to Diodra. But it's interesting. I don't think... I don't know anyone named Diodra. But it's weird. My brain automatically defaults to that. Tell me if I'm saying that right. Because I've been saying a lot of names wrong recently in a lot of the manga reviews. So feel free to correct me. But of course, we end up back in the dueling chamber and we see mortlock standing before a cloud of smoke and we see mortlock look at his blade with i, I i'm not sure once again nakaba he's very good at conveying emotions and almost like somberness what how he looks at his blade is like i didn't do it even if i didn't want to and he proceeds to look around he's like uh Wait a minute. How odd this is. Why hasn't this space been undone? That's very interesting. It's interesting how also he doesn't notice what happened to him. It's weird. But obviously, we gotta have the main man himself cooked. As we see that Mortlock gassing himself up, he says he doesn't think he knows. I know that Lone Strike failed, Percival. Even if he survived, he couldn't avoid a fatal wound. However... He comes out with the stompers, bro. And look at bro. Look at look at look at look at the cape flowing in the wind, looking all nice and juicy and immaculate. Look at the pose. Look at the pose. Look at the pose. Dog. Look at the pose. Bro is keyed up right now. Look at the ankles. They're all on rise. They are literally on rise mode right now. And look at Mortlock, bro. He's like, wait a minute. What in the world? <laughs> when did you get the life DLC? What happened? <laughs> And of course, you know, Percy, he just liked that for real, for real. Honestly, I still don't like the fit. 
there, I don't think there's anything that's going to make me come around on this fit until we get a new one. I don't know, some about the fit. The only good thing about the fit is the fingerless gloves. And the shoes, but I think the shoes are the same. It's just the onesie does not do it for me. And you're looking at a Kingdom Hearts fan, so you would think the onesie would do it for me, but it just doesn't hit for me. However, of course, Mortlock is flabbergasted to see Percy not just standing there, but seemingly enough unharmed, with no hope magic to heal him. And we see that Percy, he's he's a little nettle, he's a little angry boy. And Mortlock asks, how could you possibly be unhurt? No healing magic may be cast within this space. And you would would you care to explain this life juice on the... I don't know. You, you know what? I can actually let that slide. Because there are times when I've woken up, looked in the mirror, and just seen a random cut on me. Like, I have no idea where they come from. And unless something takes me over and sleep. And this doesn't just happen to me. There's other people I'm either related to or know. They've told me it's happened before. Where they'll just take damage and never notice it. But you'd think Morlock would notice, right? Like, he's a highly trained agent. And this isn't, like, a small amount of life juice. This is a decent amount. So the fact that there's such a delayed effect between him getting... And him actually noticing is crazy. As we see that, yeah, Percy is the one who sliced him. And typically sliced him in a really weird spot, too. Like, sliced him here. Which is impressive. Even more impressive that Ironside didn't notice, and also not Ironside. Even more impressive that Morlock didn't notice, and even more impressive for the fact that he didn't actually tear the armor apart. And we see that Morlock, he starts stuttering, rolls in denial. He goes, No. So you parried all of my attacks? And you even landed one on me? I refuse to allow this. This mere child who couldn't hold his own against even Ironside. And we see he goes for Thousand Cross once again where he tries to speed blitz. But unfortunately, as all these different blades come across, all these different levels, Percy locks in. Amazingly enough, with a two-handed grip, too. Notably, the only, like, two-handed swords that I own. Like, not none of my key blades. Unfortunately, despite Sora having massive hands, apparently my hands are bigger. I can't wield any of... Well, we'll see when a certain one comes. I can't wield any of my key blades in one hand. Here, let me... Like... This is a one-handed blade for me. Sora holds it like this. But this is uncomfortable. <laughs> Maybe just because I got gigantic. I got gargantuan hands. But this is how Percy goes to defend. Which is very impressive. Mortlock's coming in one-handed from all different directions. But Percy's locked in like this. That's wild. And we see... Hold on one second. Let me put this up back gingerly. I still need to make sure I fix this. I can't believe I dropped you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, my baby. My baby. The only blades that I own that I can very ooh, I'll shock you again. The only blades that I own that I can very specifically wield with two hands are the actual two-handed blades. My katanas. Because my hands ain't that big. I typically pretend to wield them with one hand, but like this these are two-handed blades. But the personal sword is extremely tiny. And of course, while I do have Lost Vein, I don't have Dragon Handle, but Lost Vein is also a one-handed sword. So the fact that Percy is wielding it with both hands is a testament to how tiny his hands are. However, the tiny hands and the size and stature do not matter as Percy is Timothy No Hatter. As boom, he just casually blocks them all. Once again, super impressive skill feat. Because if more, if it's true, say more like he just isn't going easy on his brother-in-law, which could be possible, then. Ironside should be light work. And obviously, Ironside will have magic amping him and will be able to use magic in ways that Percy may not be able to counter as easily. But dog, that's crazy. And realize, if Mortlock is truly more skilled than Ironside, then when Percy fought and defeated Ironside, then he cleared a beyond Ironside level gap in his training. Bro, may just be empathy. And we see... That once again, Percy being kind, it doesn't actually strike Morlock. It does not actually strike Morlock. He simply swings his blade to get Morlock to back off. And we see that Percival explains, I fought against Dad all this week so I could defeat him. And Morlock is shocked. And we get a flashback to a time that I thought had a different outcome because we skipped over it. We see that Percy explains, and I did beat him, too. At least, with my sword, I did. Okay, that's level 4 beaten. The only guy I could never beat, no matter how long I tried. Once again, this is so much glaze for Lance. He's got to get humbled soon. Great work, Percy. So, 
So, are we done with the training? No, not at all. Level 5, you see, is me. So, interesting. This means one of two things. Either the Arthur that Lance saw in Camelot, and he knows that Percy saw in Camelot, wasn't worth training Percy against, because Lance thinks he's better. Or, this is Lance saying, Arthur's even mightier than me. Which makes sense. And you're going to have to beat me before you can even try training against him. I'm going to assume it's the latter. I'm going to assume that Lance isn't that full of himself. So, interesting. Percy could never beat level 5. Lancelot, the most powerful of Percy's friends. And, whew, he clearly is. And we see, I, I may have lied to you, because I did say Percy was kind enough to not split Morlock down the middle, but yeah, he splits Morlock straight down the middle. He is locked in. And we see his definite strength acquired in his training with Lancelot. Everything is for beating Ironside. So obviously Ironside's going to need a massive amp. Or his magic is going to have to be super crazy. He has to be way stronger than Camelot or something, or else this Percy should load him. This is a Percy with pure sword skill alone. After one week of training. Beating someone who's supposedly more skilled than Ironside. Ironside needs a buff. You see why I assume everyone has to get humbled. Some Somehow, everyone has to get humbled. Tristan just recently got an amp. Gawain just recently got the friendship power-up amp. Percy is now beyond Ironside level in terms of raw sword skill, apparently. And... Lancelot just got a Sacred Treasure tier amp. Arthur's going to have to humble them all. But, speaking of humbling, this is, in fact, a very W chapter. Completely different from what I expected. I thought we were going to get to spare Percy or something, but clearly not needed. Percy's clearly Himothy, and I'm more than happy to award this chapter with worthiness. However, that is what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have a Patreon down below, a store for as though as one, Kenum one, Dell month, you can see like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also then become a member of the channel for as low as $3 a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks include the live reaction to this very chapter. Now, I want to thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a just kidding. You thought I was about to leave without a password? Nah, I want to see which one of y'all has paid attention. If you made it all the way to the end of this beefy little video, please leave the night of death in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Dagwell the Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members, Wakanda Plays, Red Wolf, 4765, and Burp Skills. I'd like to give another very big thank you to our five dollar patrons, Sean, Midnight Gemlord, Kevin, and Demix LND. And I'd like to give a fat hefty thank you to our ten dollar patrons, Robbie Uchia, Joaquin, and iDemokami. And I'd like to give another hefty, hefty thank you to our twenty five dollar member, Alex Ice Rose. And another big fat scrum dilly thank you to our $25 patrons, Igneal and Calvin Elder.